All right, wait a minute. We're gonna go get choice if. Look at him. No, no. Be my friend. Damn it. In other news, we're rocking the skull candies. And hey, I don't want to hear no sh talking about the skull candies. They're 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 not bad, okay? They look cringe, but they're not bad. But we're gonna be reacting again. We got a good old game ranks video. They do tons of top ten lists in the gaming world, and uh, this one seemed interesting. So let's look into it. Ten games that are overpromised and underdelivered. So are these the ten most overhyped games? The most overpromised and underdelivered games? Let's find out. Pretty sure I disagree just by looking at the timeline here, but let's hear what they have to say. Today we want to look at games that specifically had a lot of promise. Starfield, and just off rip, baby, let's go. Games that didn't necessarily all end up bad, but just didn't quite reach the heights that we were expecting, or maybe even the creators of the games were expecting. We got 10 games. That's actually a really important distinction. That doesn't mean the games are trash, that they, they don't suck, they just were improperly marketed, basically. I mean, they were overhyped, underdelivered. They can still, the final product can still be okay. Starfield's not a bad game. It's just not even close to what they promised, right? Games to talk about, so let's get started off with number 10. Of course, I have to bring up the Fable series. This is painful for me because, to be honest, I absolutely love the original Fable games, but I've never played these and I don't care. We're gonna move on to number nine. Off rip, skipping it. Yeah, this shit looks awful. Get it out of my face. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. I guess we're sticking with something that's kind of Xbox, and it's Halo Infinite. Okay. Halo Infinite, yep, we actually fair. went on record that's recently fair. saying that the game has been improved recently. But unfortunately... <laughs> recently? That it's been improved recently. No, it has. Halo, Halo Infinite is actually sick now. It's unfortunate because when it came out, it was awful. So if they're going based on, like, official release date, it came out, what was the promise? and did it hit that promise, then yeah, Halo Infinite was garbage on release. I mean, it's been, what, five years already? And it's still probably not the best Halo, right? Halo 3 exists, Halo 2 exists, Reach exists, all of them, but it is decent. Actually, it seems okay. like too little too late. Halo Infinite yep. has yeah. a player base. It fluctuated for sure around launch, but ultimately it was the promise of the game being titled Halo Infinite. 2021, dude. All right, I said five years, that's insane. Was that, wait, was that September? Of the September? Game entitled uh, Halo. December? All right, so we're coming up on three full years. Oh, infinite. The Halo that would just I don't know, keep man. you playing forever. It's pretty bad. Unfortunately, that just didn't really work out. And it feels like Halo Infinite has lost steam, both like in the world, people playing the game, but also in the gaming culture. You just don't hear people too hyped up about it these days. So Halo Infinite. That's, that's actually a really good uh, point and perspective to bring up the culture around a game something that always blows my mind because I, I finally beat the first one horizon zero dawn and i'm finally starting horizon forbidden west horizon series as a whole is like one of the highest selling video game franchises of all time period full stop especially for like a sony franchise a sony exclusive it eventually comes to pc but it's like one of the highest selling period who t who has ever mentioned that in conversation have you ever talked to your friends about horizon dude have you ever gone to walmart and seen horizon toys i know they have a, like a lego collab it just has zero cultural re uh, relevance and the halo used to be something that had crazy cultural relevance me and my friends would talk about halo non-stop as a kid it was one of the main game franchises that you talked about it was one of the whole uh <laughs> it was like the backbone of the xbox versus playstation uh console wars back in the day and now it's just in, oh yeah, Infinite's trash. Let's let's go on Steam DB for a second. The uh, player counts here on Steam helps if you spell it right. <laughs> Why was that so hard for me? <laughs> All right, let's look at peak like six months, full year, eighteen grand. Uh, peak at 13, 13, 14, three months, just three to five thousand. That's not bad. By the way, having three thousand players online in the game does not make it trash i mean indie games around this and they're huge huge for an indie game right but for one of the set, like top like a console selling series oh my god just embarrassing anyway i'll let him make his final points here didn't really live up to the name infinite it didn't fulfill the promise of it being yeah. kind of a return yeah. to form for halo with the campaign yes but also a strong solid multiplayer foundation that would carry it for years although the new weapons aren't bad what is this? He's gonna drive into the. <laughs> nice, dude. That's a that's a clip. 
clip it, the dude. The core gameplay is awesome. It's great. But for some reason, 343, I guess, just never really stuck the landing with this one. I bounced out a while back. There's all different reasons to really go into this. But ultimately, Halo isn't the massive sensation that it could be. Halo really yeah. could have competed yeah. with, like, the big heavyweights, like Fortnite. Halo Infinite could have been the one, but it just wasn't quite there. <laughs> I mean, Master Chief is in Fortnite, so... Not so tough, I think. Chilling. Break open easy. Soft Chief, I see him. Thanks, Cortana. Thanks, I, I wasn't gonna do anything. I was just gonna die right there. Thanks for the heads up. Next over at number eight, we have Star Wars Battlefront. The new mm. Star Wars Battlefront game okay. published by EA years Two? back was incredibly exciting leading up uh, to the launch. Remaster? The people behind the Battlefield games were working on it. This could be yes, absolutely were. awesome. Everybody was really excited for the return of Battlefront. It had been so many years, and some of us have... I'm just going to cut it off short. It doesn't matter if you're talking about Battlefront 1 or 2. Whichever, the, the two recent ones are massive disappointments compared to their predecessors, and everyone thought it was going to be like a, a the second coming of this franchise. If you like Star Wars and you like Battlefield, this is your game. It is Battlefield set in the Star Wars universe, and it's just, I don't know, they were buggy and glitchy on launch, like not enough weapons, not enough maps, just super weak sauce, no player base, gotten better over time, but kind of the same. We're going to move on to number seven. We're going to skip it. We're going to skip it. So skip it, skip it down at number seven we have two human this is silicon knight's okay. I have not played this. last game this was a big I'm game though. for them this development studio had been working on this game for many many years i think like a decade there was originally Oof. a development deal for playstation then it flip-flopped to gamecube then eventually when the game finally released it ended up on xbox and there was just a lot of hype behind this what? one if you followed gaming news Has that because ever happened? it had gotten so many deals you know that's the a crazy that flip -flop, man. what the hell the action playstation wanted a piece of the action two human really could have been the next big thing people were thinking it was going to be a franchise they really Me. seemed like they had intentions of making it a franchise I've never heard of the it, idea so. sounded cool on paper it was like norse mythology sci-fi so you're playing as like a cool dude look at these guys <laughs> look at this dude stats baby wow Three out of five down the middle. <laughs> Diversity right there, dude. It's it's the man. It's Chief Is that his name right there, or or is his name Champion? Air Combat Critical. Star. All right, you know what? Sci-fi. So you're playing as like a cool cybernetic superhuman Balder going around slaying enemies. Balder. Balder's Gate mentioned. Hello. What is he ice skating? What is this? Dude is moving. Then unfortunately, when it yeah, finally... I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this one. <laughs> I'm gonna cut this one short too. There, this was not gonna be a massive franchise, no sir. Let's just move on. I think this is Starfield. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we're at number six. We have Starfield. Yeah. Now this is a contract. I actually I want to talk about. I I have I have an idea in my head already. I feel like I've never said it. Um, so I have a marketing degree from Cornell. Not I mean, an applied economics and management degree. That's just their fancy way of saying. An undergraduate business degree and then i concentrated in marketing i took the the 3000 the 4000 level classes some analytical marketing stuff consumer research uh consumer behavior market research only two of those are real tell me which one was fake <laughs> the reason i am so drawn towards marketing is not just the flashy scummy advertising and the psychology behind tricking people into purchase products it's the fact, the simple fact that at the end of the day it doesn't matter what your product and service is if you cannot market it properly to the people to consumers to your target audience it doesn't do sh it doesn't make sales doesn't get players whatever the metric is there has to be good marketing behind the product doesn't matter how good the product is you have to market it right so starfield was a massive marketing failure the game again i, I said at the beginning a little bit it's not a bad game fundamentally it's not a bad game it's perfectly fine the marketing of the game was todd howard getting on stage and xbox tweeting stuff and social media posts and paying influencers to talk about it and it was sold as this giant infinite space you can go anywhere do anything and then we got there and it's just boring ass planets with nothing to do repetitive copy paste camps and more of the same bethesda bullshit that you would expect to have been ironed out with the, the engine 2 what do they call it? the creation engine it's creation engine 2.0 my god dude look how good the graphics are didn't matter same same janky shit as always so if you're going to market the game as a more polished giant space travel game, and then you just give us a janky sh version of Skyrim in space, that's a marketing issue. Because again, janky sh Skyrim in space was still fun. 
I, I still like genuinely it was fun but it's not what we were sold todd damn it one it's a newer game people are still forming their opinions on it but we'll be totally trying did this video hit a month ago Brother, what do you mean it's a newer game? It's been out for almost a year. Shut your Transparent mouth. Transparent here. I did the before you buy for Starfield, and I said I liked it. I just don't okay. love it. I don't think it really quite yeah, reached the heights of some of Bethesda Studios' best games. Yeah, I mean, Skyrim. But there was still some fun to be the had ground, there. Man. But did Not the game close. really promise too much and underdelivered? These. These right here. These videos where Todd and the team hyped this shit up. Decades in the making. Oh, look at the gameplay in the background. Look at the combat. Oh, all these things are better. And then you got in, and it was just... It just wasn't actually better and it was barren and boring was with some of the space disappointing stuff, planetary exploration yeah. at launch just wasn't very exciting dude what do you mean at launch what have they done to improve it <laughs> it's the same thing don't give credit where it's not due come on hail that shit, baby hit another loading screen you know you want to the right idea there for ah. this game what was pitched to us was building a spaceship flying out in that spaceship and exploring yep. planets in yes. a bethesda style gameplay system but those planets were boring repetitious bland and, and filled with not much a lot of that stuff those aspects hey, were undercooked based. that's where we think well, starfield under delivered I mean, there's a lot yeah. to enjoy yep. about starfield and people certainly are whether it's the combat the questing uh, some of the characters and the charm We'll give combat a thumbs up. We'll, we'll give questing a meh, and we'll give characters a thumbs down, dude. What are you talking about? There's no memorable characters in this shit. Are you kidding me? Um, or the world Come building. On. Starfield is cool, but we never yeah, really got cool. the sense of space exploration like we were quite hoping. Ultimately, it, it's relatively fair. They're, they're sucking up to Bethesda a little bit, but yeah. Again, it's like, it's not a bad game, but it was poorly marketed, and therefore the expectations were vastly different than what the final product was, and therefore people think it sucked. People think it sucks. It's a, a thing in marketing called anchoring. You anchor someone's uh, perceived value or their, you know, opinion or what, what they expect, their expectations. You anchor it down. And if it doesn't hit that anchor, people are pissed or they're really happy if you exceed it, right? Um, it's the same process behind cans of soup. Uh, you, ever, you ever see the oh, 10 for $10? They're anchoring your brain to think that you should be purchasing 10. You only wanted to buy one or two cans. Now you're thinking, I should buy a 10 to get this deal. Anchoring. So slightly different way of using it, but yeah, they anchored our brains into thinking this was going to be a different game than it was. I've, uh, I've repeated myself too many times, so let's move on. Yeah, Baron, look at that desert with some rocks, Next baby. over at number five, we have Advent Rising. I talked about this recently in another heard video, but I thought it was worth really visiting because a lot of people forgot about this one, but this 2005 game uh -huh. was published by Majesco that would be why. and released on PC and the original Xbox. And Very this old. was a was kind Matrix? of third person action sci-fi adventure. <laughs> Halo Warthog? Third person running and gunning, shooting aliens on alien planets. You were hopping in vehicles and driving them around. It kind of felt a little bit like third person Halo with an <laughs> emphasis on sci-fi sci-fi storytelling and world building. Famous sci-fi writer fun. Orson Scott Card helped come up with the story. Tommy Tallarico did the music. There was a spin-off comic book series people, and everything. And the idea was this thing was going to be the next big franchise. It was a planned trilogy, but ultimately Advent Rising released. It was pretty cool. And that was it. So hmm. where this game really under delivered was the promise of it being something cool that we'd all invest in, like a cool world, a bunch of games and sequels. There was a planned uh, PSP spinoff as well called Advent Shadow that was in the works. That was canceled hmm. because the game released and the reception wasn't bad. It was kind of average, but it just really didn't hook audiences. Just Huh. I mean, you're saying overpromised, underdelivered because they said there'd be three games, but then it didn't sell well enough to fund the second two games. Eh. It's like they just had to put some obscure titles in here. They couldn't just only pick on, you know, the the new releases that have bombed. Like, is Cyberpunk on here, for example? Maybe, maybe not. If it's not, I mean, that's obviously deserving of being in here anyway general audiences i really would have been curious to see where this series would have went i was pretty excited for it to be honest but unfortunately advent rising mm -hmm. never delivered those big sequels in this big ten pulp franchise it does look like it could be cool now down at number four we have battlefield 2042 oh, now yeah. in recent months they've really Expected. turned this game around it has improved it has given things that players wanted but at launch Man, this game was an absolute mess. But it's the like promise, which it's is like the, the Halo Infinite story, man. 
It's the same thing. It's 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 one for one the same thing. It's the Battlefield equivalent of Halo Infinite. They, they it was going to be the next one for the players. Everyone loves it. It's perfect. It's going to be supported forever. And then it was just a buggy shit mess with not enough maps, not enough weapons, not enough variety, and broken servers on launch. And so there's no player base, and like it slowly came back over time as they fixed the game. But it's been years, and it's too too little, too late. Post but no cigar, buddy. The point of this video, the promise was that Battlefield 2042 was the one for the fans. There was yeah, no exactly. campaign, no fluff, no nonsense. It was yeah. all multiplayer built around creating those big, exciting, organic moments that you'd see go viral in Battlefield games. This game was gonna offer tons of massive maps, uh, all different types of weapons, the options to play different weird modes, even kind of engage in, in different levels of warfare, like World War II and certain playlists. There was so much like weight of stuff and hype behind Battlefield 2042. <laughs> and then none of it was in like the game when the it came out. The multiplayer gamer's game. And Nothing. whatever it released, it was a mess. First of all, it was based around like a character operator system that people really didn't like. It just was yeah, not compelling that. and it wasn't Battlefield. The game also just was a glitchy, awful yeah, mess. Good hit Hits right registering. There. Vehicles were clipping through the map. The game was completely undercooked and unfinished and it was really painful to see. And they were charging full price yeah, for this really thing. It had a lot of ideas there, but in terms of quality, it really underdelivered. I mean, at launch, the game didn't even have like the famous, like overly detailed Battlefield scoreboards. That's something that players actually really love. Oh, and yeah. we were like immediately like, wait, where is all this? Yeah, you couldn't bring up the scoreboard, period. You had like just your immediate squad scoreboard and no frame of reference to how the team's doing or anything besides the overall team score. Oh my God, dude. Battlefield 2042 stuff like Halo Infinite Battlefield 2042 could have been the battlefield that we played Dude, for I like said it first. years I don't know if that's gonna happen Stealing like I my said lines, man. they've kind of turned it around but I don't know if the damage is really done or not yet at this point no it is now down at number three. dude you posted this in June Dude, they I, I'm pretty sure by June 20 uh, June 9th or whatever they had already confirmed publicly that they're wrapping down there's like one more big summer event and then they're moving towards like an even bigger, more ambitious battlefield with like three main studios working on it. Something stupid. <laughs> it was, this one was too big, too ambitious in live service and it didn't work. And the CEO went, you know what? Let's run it back, baby. And they're going to triple down on it. <sighs> it sucks because Battlefield's a series I grew up on. I, I loved it. I, I was, I started as a COD guy and then I realized that Battlefield was better for what I wanted in a first person shooter. I can't get the chopper gonna score streak in my COD in my COD lobbies, but I can spawn into a helicopter and have fun in Battlefield. And it was just so cool, the destructibility and everything. And in three, it was insane. Coming off the back of like Bad Company 2. In four, it was like more spectacular, but the little details of the destruction were a little bit worse. And then ever, everyone since then, it's like the destruction has just gotten like less detailed. I don't know, it's garbage, whatever. Let's see what number three, three? is. Star Citizen. Now, I know, oh, yeah, Star just, I'll stop you here. I know there are some Star Citizen fans that watch these videos. We hear you. People that are invested or yeah, just I'm not invested. playing I don't Star know Citizen about or it. in the community. Is this, is this not the game that has like $200 bajillion raised and like is still just a half-assed unfinished product and it's like everything Starfield wanted to be, <laughs> but is also still broken, so they both suck? They're in it for the long haul. Am, am I thinking of the right it, thing? And we will or is that not yuck your yum there. No. You do you. But it still isn't technically fully released. So we're counting no, it as a game that one. has promised a lot, but hasn't actually delivered. Yeah, whatever. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm skipping this one too, dude. Get out of here. Now down number, number two. two, we have Brink. Oh, man. Oh, Brink! Brink! It's released in 2011 Brink. for PC, PS3, oh my and God. Xbox 360. It was... Dude. This was a game that I thought looked cool. And by the time I bought it, the servers were already dead. And then it got like decommissioned and uh, servers offline like within a month. It was so weird. So I played like Published two hours. Published by Bethesda, but it was made by Splash Damage. And this, this was cool. for a lot of us, was going to be like the next have wall cool running? multiplayer experience. Like crazy traversal stuff? It was incredibly stuff? ambitious, right? It was going to have like single player elements, co-op elements, multiplayer <laughs> elements. You saw it, right? For a lot of us, running, dude. was going to be like the next cool multiplayer experience. It was incredibly ambitious, right? It this dude right here. 
It was going to have whoop, like single whoop, player elements, dude. elements. It was like wall running and jumping. Elements. All these oh hybrid gameplay systems. Titanfall wishes. Turned into a cool first person game that was really going to feel different. Yeah, when it released, this was a it cool got kind of concept. mixed to average reviews. Some reviews were pretty bad. harsh, but some people really liked it. So it was kind of all over the I place. Think it was glitchy. But I guess it never really completely grabbed audiences. There was a lot of cool elements to it. The parkour system in it was so yeah. awesome. But that initial trailer, the reveal of Brink, yeah, the this game, game was ultimately hyped. never really felt quite like that. And it didn't really end up taking off and becoming the next cool well yeah unique. it's because it's unfortunate like games that do the cinematic trailers instead of real gameplay it's like that that side flip right there like that and it didn't really end you up can't actually do this in game you can double jump you can like maybe do a little mini wall run and jump off but you can't actually do like a sideways you know barrel roll flip and becoming the next cool so, unique multiplayer thing you know, i kind of feel like it came market. and went in the blink of an eye and that was unfortunate now, down cool at number one, like we have Fortress. Forspoken. Now, I know Spoken? Forspoken has been gone it, on enough. Let's hear it the game spun. got a lot of bad reviews, people memeing the dialogue, and just some of the quality of the game, just how unremarkable Looks it good, ended though. up being. Look, we're not here Generic, to revisit that conversation, but we do want to look back at when the game was first revealed. This was a game that promised something really cool and it didn't deliver that. Uh, this game yeah. was originally Agreed. revealed as a work in progress thing called Project Athea or Project Athea, whatever. It was a new I thing for the people behind Final Fantasy 15. It had a bunch of famous game developers and writers behind the initial concept. And it was before the release of PS5. And, and this thing was billed as like, this is what the games are gonna be like. This is next generation. This is gonna have ray tracing, all that crazy yeah. stuff. And to be honest, that initial video of Project Athea yeah, it the looked absolutely awesome. It did look like did the it next thing. It looked like a generational leap. It was That's so cringe. cool. You see the character moving around at super high speeds in these absolutely gorgeous environments, just graphically incredible. But unfortunately, so, yeah, that, that was not representative of the final game. They must have really had that just as like a very, very early product demonstration, like a rough concept, because the I final so version, which uneven. is called Forspoken, is nothing really like that. Nowhere near what as What is cool. this number? 65 in the middle of the screen. It's simple off. but awesome concept. Instead, we got a game that was just kind of like, eh, mid is what they say now, right? That's like what we use. It had some moments. The movement was cool. Some of the magic system. Oh my God, you're such a fucking like millennial, dude. Ah, oh, that just triggered me so hard. What do the kids say these days? <laughs> mid? Yeah, mid, middle. It's not even hard to understand. <laughs> middle of the road. There's high and low, and then in the middle is mid. <laughs> What are they saying? On cap for real? Systems were cool, but the story, the world was just forced. It didn't feel compelling. According to Square Enix themselves, the sales of the game were lackluster and we're probably never gonna see a sequel. Yeah, no shit. But hey, that video was a bummer. <laughs> Those are 10 games that just promised too much and didn't deliver. Okay. Obviously, right. this is a complicated one and some of you may agree or disagree with some of our choices. And that's the point of this. We're having a conversation. So let us know in the comments. Cool, cool, cool. So let's look at some other ones shall we real quick this is just theme charts obviously but little known game uh, called cyberpunk 2077 so a lot of that video was naturally on uh like initial release uh quality and everything versus what they were promised and obviously cyberpunk fits that i can't believe they didn't put cyberpunk in here it's like they just wanted to find some obscure indie games or, or smaller games older games instead of the low-hanging fruit which is fair but let's look at Cyberpunk, where it peaks at 275,000, which... Wait, what? I'm... Am I stupid? This was just this year. <laughs> peaks at a million! Mother of God! Is that the all-time, like, craziest? That's gotta be up there. I didn't realize it was that high. Okay, the number six all-time highest player count on PC at any given time in history with Cyberpunk. The game is broken. Obviously, we don't need to... Everyone understands that that should be on there. I want to find one more. Maybe Hogwarts? You could honestly argue Hogwarts. I'm going to go off on a limb and say you could argue Hogwarts Legacy just because the... I, I almost want to say that the trailers and the marketing for Hogwarts were not even misleading. They were mysterious. And so people started building narratives of what you could do. And then when it came out and the open world was open but not that big. And there were a lot of cool spells but a lot of them felt the same. And, you know, just the narrative inconsistencies with the story, it was okay. So I, I could see that one being considered overhyped to some extent. And obviously all the cancel culture stuff around it with, 
with good old JK Rowling. Definitely added fuel to that fire. All right, I'm rambling. Let's uh, let's shut her on down. Do you like that? Do you think Game Ranks had a good list? Do you think some of my uh, suggestions and honorable mentions should have been in that list? Let me know. Let's have a conversation in the comments and let's argue because this is the internet and that's what we do. Thumbs up. That's my kitty chai. Uh, if you like the video, like the video. Subscribe for more of this bullshit. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.